Welcome back to TTC. This is our eighth episode in our light testing series. We built a bargain bin light integration sphere of sorts, then sent samples out to a lab that does lumen testing professionally to calibrate our own with some encouraging results so far. Today we take a look at work lights slash mini floodlights. Some like Snap-on call them project lights. So we'll be doing lumen tests, lumens across their runtime, brake clean testing, a nice automotive fluid concoction dunking for a good measure, and of course drop tests to see if the cream rises to the top. But we have seven lights plus a Milwaukee Rover from a past episode to compare to, so let's jump in. First up in a slew of 400 lumen rated work lights is the Streamlight Cyclone mini work light. And that's Cyclone spelled with an S like the GMC Cyclone, one of the first and maybe best will beat you from a stoplight sport truck, so hoping it brings some of that performance though I think they've been aiming for a more popular lights name that we'll be showing in a bit. This is 400 lumens as we mentioned, and about 54 bucks. It's got two different light functions, the 400 lumens sort of cool white Kelvin color, and a warmer 300 lumen 90 CRI rated light, 90 CRI being 90% of the way to matching how sunlight represents colors. Most normal work lights are usually in the 65 to 80 CRI, for instance. It's got a useful magnet for this size and rotates 360 degrees, plus a hook, good stuff. It charges with a micro USB, which you're pretty much guaranteed to try the wrong way first, but that charging isn't very rapid either. We found it draws about 0.56 amps. In an engine bay, the high CRI setting is sort of nice, not super bright, but pleasant. The brighter 400 lumen setting is pretty narrow pointed though, high candela wise, very flashlight-esque, which is a bit odd for a work light. You gotta sort of point your reticle sniper style at whatever you're working on. In the old globe of lumen truth though, let's see what she's putting out. Waiting the 30 seconds per the ANSI F1 standard and we're seeing 356, 362, 364, and low is 160 to 180 or so. 90 CRI mode is spot on at 300, maybe even 320 or so. But with the white card removed, high mode is still seeing 366 about. We'll call that 365 or 9% off of their claim. Not criminal, but also maybe a rocky start. Next up in 400 lumens again is the Olight Swivel. This is a new light from them. Well, frankly, all of the lights we're featuring today are new. If it didn't come out in the last year or two, it wasn't a model we considered for this episode. This particular one is quite affordable at just $35 though, that's bargain prices in the rechargeable game. It swivels, obviously, from the base frame and has magnets on it. It has two functions, a 200 lumen flashlight and 400 lumen floodlight that, well, it doesn't hit you over the head with, let's say, its brightness in person. It takes USB-C, which is always a plus, and has charge level lights, another plus there too. And takes about one amp when charging, that's pretty normal stuff. In an engine bay, this one feels very night light-esque, I guess. Like, you can tell that it's on, but you can't really see what it's pointing at. Usually 400 lumens is enough to do the trick. The flashlight is a bit more effective though, maybe less practical as a flashlight being this shape. Let's see what the old globe thinks. It's seeing 209, 208, 211. Maybe without the card, 198, 184. Oh, that's pretty low. Let's try to just fish hook this thing into there. Maybe it's due to its size. 186, 206. It's not easy to sway the sphere. That isn't high. The flashlight sees 240, 242, so higher than the 200 lumens they are saying there, but that 400 lumen flood setting is just pretty weak sauce. No way around it. Our last light in the 400 lumen category is the Snap-on ABS Project Light that costs a reasonable $60, $62, which we've tested before, so we're bringing in help in the form of Snap-on's pricier option as well, the $98 aluminum 700 lumen rated ECPRA072. These are pretty similar lights. They both got that push down and hold to dim and adjust function, which ain't bad. Both take USB-C. Though the aluminum one does look a bit brighter in person and has charge level lights on the back. They both have useful magnets, but an oversight might be that the more expensive one can't rotate past being upright, while the $60 one can, and only pointing out the side is not a super useful thing at times. The light from the ABS plastic model is decent, not crazy, but can be pointed at things easier. The aluminum snap-on light is brighter and more useful in that sense, but might not point to where you need it to always. 
Last time we tested the 400 lumen ABS light, it made 400, and we're seeing, yeah, 401, 403, 405. Good to know we're still there. The 700 lumen model we just purchased, though, let's see that. So it's seen quite a bit less at first, but the card was sort of overlapping a bit from the emitter. It reaches 732, 716, 728, and adjusts all the way down to 60 or 90 lumens. Then when back up, peaks to 753, 742 or so. But after those 30 seconds with that ANSI standard, it's more like 725. We're calling it 725 of its rated 700 though. That's very nice. Our next light is a bit of everything. Lumen output like the last snap on 720 lumens though. A price point like the Olight, just $33 on this one. And a name like Cyclops, which looking like this tool is pretty befitting. Very much like the Streamlight Cyclone that I think Streamlight was probably aiming for name-wise. These Maxion Cyclops lights are ridiculously popular. People buy them in three packs in multiple colors. They are affordable enough to do so. They haven't updated this design much over the years, but the spec has. This is 720 lumens, 2500 milliamp hour battery version, some of their latest stuff. It's sort of simple stupid design-wise in a good way plus charge level lights in USB-C that only charges at 0.65 amps or so, but just the low, medium, high, button, off, easy stuff. And in engine bay, it's bright, like decently bright, but not crazy, very adequate, but not like a laser light show either. Let's see those 720 lumens. So it looks like we're finding 590, 588, 587, 580, calling that 585. Low is 130 to 140, medium is 300, and high again, 582, 585. That's 19% down. Seemed like specific enough of a figure to be accurate, but down to 585 might be something you'd notice outside of a lab too. Moving up in lumens, price, and complexity, now we have the Astro 100 SL, which this one's main party trick is being able to be wirelessly rechargeable their second light to use this pad after their folding 52SL one. But it can be charged with the included USB-C and wall adapter as well at two amps, which I believe qualifies as fast charging. It's 1000 lumens, which unsurprisingly, yeah, it looks bright. It has a push and hold to dim like the Snap-on, but is a bit chunkier than the Snap-on, partly I'm sure due to that 21700 cell battery inside, that's 4,500 milliamp hours in capacity. It has a fold-out base frame deal with a magnet. In an engine bay, 1,000 lumens, especially anywhere situated close to what you're looking at, is, yeah, that's bright. If you point it at sort of half of an engine bay, its intensity is sort of like a 2,000 lumen underhood light. But I'm human and, of course, capable of bias, so let's see what the sphere says. So it's reading 996, 991, 990, 989, and holding steady. We'll call that 990 lumens. Then low is about 80 to 90 lumens, pretty in ratio with the 100 to 1000 lumens it advertises. Okay, so last up, well, technically because we'll be comparing these to the Milwaukee Rover at the end, we've tested that as well, but we have the Nebo Slim Plus 1200. This is one of Nebo's most recent introductions, a solid aluminum light body with plenty of modes, 700 lumens in high, 350 medium, just 30 lumens on low, and even a red light 8 lumen setting for reading maps while hiking, I guess. Then of course, holding down for turbo, which should be good for a monstrous 1200 lumens, and it looks it, seriously bright stuff. Though with this size, you're getting a lithium polymer battery, a 1500 milliamp hour one, so curious how long it's really gonna last when it's stepping up and down from 1200 and 700 lumens. It charges with USB-C at 0.8 amps, which is pretty normal has magnets on the rear belt clip and base for work light use, and even has a cool little laser pointer function, a lot packed into this small thing. Especially because it has somewhat of a narrow area of spread, its high setting of 700 lumens looks very bright in person, and Turbo 1200 can basically turn things white for you, for better or worse. Its magnets are useful, but also not super adjustable. 1200 lumens though, that's a pretty tall order. Let's see if it can muster it. Okay, so we need to get this thing back into turbo mode as it fell out of it, and now we're seeing 1250, 1246, yeah, at least 1200 lumens. They were onto something there, and high is about 712 or so, good stuff. 
And here's what it looks like on our scoreboard thus far with lumens they did see. In our experience though, peak lumens are great, but light output across runtime is what really separates the boys from the men. We're going to jump right into that with the O light on the left here, then the stream light, then the two snap-ons in ABS and aluminum on the right. The aluminum snap-on obviously starts out higher at just over 700 lumens, followed by the other one, but then it sharply dives down and goes out just past the hour and a half mark, followed soon thereafter by the Streamlight Cyclone 10 minutes later. The 400 lumen snap-on holds on a bit longer though and tapers off down past two and a half hours, pretty good. So the Olight, right. This Olight doesn't make a whole lot of lumens as we showed, but it also just doesn't die. To illustrate that, we're going to continue on to the next lights with this Olight still in the fold, leaving off where we showed it around two and a half, three hours in. So we're gonna have the Olight over here once again, still, then the Cyclops, then the 100 SL, and finally the Nebo here. We're starting out with the Nebo in the 700 lumens high setting. So the Nebo drops like a ton of bricks right out the gate on high, not turbo, so we kick it into high again here and force it up, but it then just does the same thing again. The 100 SL is making its descent down from 1000 lumens, and the Cyclops is sloping down more gingerly. The Nebo and Cyclops both conk out at just over two hours, and the Astro with that much larger battery takes just over three hours to do the same. The Olight though, geez. I don't know what to tell you guys. This thing still has half charge. It went through the two, two and a half hours of the first lights, three, three and a half hours now, and it's still half charge. Look at the chicken scratch here, all these lights, and then the O light. I'm just gonna let you guys know when this thing dies. I'm already gone through two batteries on this camera. And it lasted eight hours and 20 minutes. For contacts versus all the others, that's what this would look like. Obviously not a ton of light from the sky, really quite a lot less than they were saying, which was 400, but it'll last forever. Low wattage usage is pretty efficient as it turns out. A good camping light for in the tent maybe. But we don't use these for camping, so let's see some pain inflicted on these models. First up is brake clean. Some lights made from nylon and other composites don't mind, whereas others made from softer plastics like ABS practically melt from the spritzy stuff. Case in point, the Cyclops is very much ABS and has a plastic lens cover, so the good stuff makes the lens milky and the body sort of peelable. The Cyclone, though, is basically the opposite. Streamlight stuff is usually pretty robust in our experience, and its nylon body and what appears to be polycarbonate lens don't mind the chemical treatment at all. A side-by-side -side of the Snappies shows the same ABS on the left, aluminum on the right. Lens is not bad, though. The Olight texture-wise felt like nylon to me, but had a bad day with this one. Scrapable and once dried, check out the damage. Doesn't enjoy the stuff. The 100 SL does pretty well being made of nylon. Lens, not too bad either. But these rubber pieces do get a bit soft and smudgy. Not sure the purpose of them, actually. The Nebo is basically untouched. Aluminum and glass lens, nothing to really inflict on that. A common early death for lights around here is when they get dropped in coolant or oil. So let's mix up a slurry of that coolant, plus a little gas and oil two-stroke mix for good measure, then make a sort of witch's brew of bad idea soup and plop them all in. Since you're likely going to at least attempt a Coast Guard style aerial rescue of your light once it drops in the drink, I think that a bath in this mixture for a long length is somewhat unrealistic. So I'm gonna drop them in, then let them dry, and then drop them in again twice a day for a week. It's that crusty coolant crud once they dry out that tends to kill them in my experience, not always dead right out of the drink. The first one to succumb to this sort of brutality is the Streamlight after two dunks. It doesn't mind chemicals on the outside, but also doesn't like being submerged in them. The Cyclops was next four days and seven dunks. Its charge lights are stuck on now for some reason, even when it's not charging. It works still, but will no longer charge once plugged in. And last we have, yes, only three lights died from this testing. We got the Olight, not looking super happy about it, but it lasted the full term pretty much, seven days and 13 dunks and drying outs. 
And here's the Nebo, also spongy buttons and discolored, but working great. Both snap-ons still work, though the ABS light looking a little less happy about it. And the 100SL as crusty looking as ever, but also still working. So with the survivors left, you know what that means, time for some drop tests. Here's five feet. All fine. 10 feet. 15 feet. And they all look fine, but the ABS snap-on now shuts off after short periods, just a few seconds, even when charged, so that one's out. 20 feet, and still fine, and 24 feet as well. So I'm gonna have to resort to spiking these on the ground until I see some more failure. It doesn't bring me any joy, but you know, science. And that was enough for the aluminum snap-on to become an octopus light. Still works amazingly, but the front composite cover and hardware mounts broke off of the aluminum body. The last two I'm just gonna give a tie to. The Nebo I was able to get the belt clip that has one of the magnets to break off, but that can be seen as superficial somewhat and still works. And the 100SL has something loose inside rattling around now which means finally we get to fill in all of these lights stats. So when we're talking lumens, I believe Olight is the most significant difference we've ever seen from a name brand. That's some percentage difference right there. The Cyclops was also a ways off, followed by the Streamlight, but that one not being too bad. We also have runtime over here and battery size that sort of goes hand in hand with that. The Olight is ridiculous. Maybe grow some indoor plants with that one. Then this here is what we call lumen minutes, how much sort of light total output these lights were able to deliver, totaled across their runtime measured at 20 minute intervals. The streamlight didn't perform like we're used to seeing on here, followed by the Nebo, partly because we kicked that one up back to high and then it dropped off quickly. Both of these having small batteries makes sense there at the bottom here. Then we have the ABS snap-on, Cyclops, aluminum snap-on, Olight, and the 100SL. The 100 SL, like yeah, that checks out, it has the largest battery, but the Olight must just be super efficient under driving that Cobb LED all day long. Charge time is a huge spread as well. We touched on their charging rates with amps, but here you can see that on full display. The lowest has the smallest battery, followed by the light with the largest battery due to fast charging, although that gets almost doubled when you charge it wirelessly, which we'd be doing. Then all of these take around four hours or more, almost five hours here on relatively small batteries. Pretty new models, all of these, but that sort of stuff seems like it could have used an update. And here we have the brake clean resistance and overall durability, which is fluids bath and then drop testing. The Nebo did the best overall there, followed by the 100SL. A big spread from the Streamlight up here, but the aluminum snap-on in third for sure, with the others in between. So in summary, the Streamlight couldn't find too much redeeming for it. It gets lost in the crowd, at least in this crowd. The Cyclops is more light for less money there. I'd probably take the ABS Snap-on over it as well. The Aluminum Snap-on seems better overall, but also not cheap and doesn't last very long on a charge despite having a larger battery. But among these, I'd say either the Cyclops or really a Milwaukee Rover, if you'll excuse us growing this list for a moment, if we borrow our data from episode three here. Not exactly super close in lumens here either, but it does last a decent amount of time, charges very fast, and in drop testing as a tank, its light is also super crisp too. It's enjoyable to use. Then of the remaining lights, the 100SL obviously put up some numbers across the board. As the most expensive light not from a tool truck here, it's aimed more for professionals. The Nebo is a pretty cool light, all said, held back by requiring a small battery for its size and won't stay in turbo mode or high mode super long, but as a small, incredibly durable project light for short-ish periods of time, it's a light that feels at least as valuable as what it costs. That all-day Olight is an oddball, maybe camping as I mentioned earlier. With all the data we're providing here, hopefully that's enough for you to make your own informed decisions though. You don't really need us for that. Appreciate you watching, suggest more light categories and brands to go along with them below, and thanks for watching.